So some of your assistants this spring have said it's, it's the most fun they've had in coaching uh, in their careers. I think Des even said it Tuesday. Uh, and I guess at this point in the spring, you know, spring could become monotonous at that time, right, where, where spring ball uh, gets, gets, gets a little long maybe. Why do you think it is that you guys have been able to keep the energy up and, and, and some of your assistants have had such a good time uh, coaching this group this spring? Well, I appreciate uh, Des uh, paying you to say that uh, so, so I could hear it. Uh, no, it's, been, it's just been, uh, I think, first and foremost, coming off of how the season ended, just gave everybody a different perspective uh, on what we get to do every single day, different perspective on, uh, on life. Um, I know it challenged me uh, to, to think about, you know, how I approach every single day and, and having a gratitude and an appreciation just to, to be able to get up every morning and uh, go do what it is I love to do. Uh, a lot of it is the, the response of the players. You know, the players have come back, as I've said all spring, with a great spirit. I mean, they have an unbelievable spirit. Uh, they're competing. They're having fun. Um, I think it's year two. Uh, so, so there's not as much thinking uh, about the process and the organization because it's kind of uh, starting starting to become part of our DNA. Uh, but I think it's it's a combination of everybody uh, has a different level of appreciation and gratitude just for life in general, and then the guys uh, lead the way with the energy and they're making it fun for us as coaches. Where do you think uh, you guys have grown the most this spring? What what areas do you think you guys have made the most progress in? For me, uh, the the biggest thing is becoming a team. Uh, and I know that that might, might sound cliche, but uh, yes, it's football, it's a team sport, but you have to be intentional uh, in becoming a team. You have to spend time together. Uh, and you're starting to see uh, guys that, that may not uh, normally hang out together. You're starting to see them interact more, which gives me an indication that they're becoming, uh, they're becoming you know, closer teammates. And uh, at the end of the day, when, when, uh, when times get tough, that's really what you rely on. You, lie, you rely on your love of, uh, of your teammates. So that area we've grown. Uh, offensively, I feel like just just the general operation and procedures uh, is a lot smoother, a lot, uh, a lot faster. Guys have a much better understanding of the system. There's not a whole lot of correction from alignments. Uh, so now we can really focus on technique and, and, and build the fundamentals that we need to build uh, in order to, uh, to execute at a high level. You know, defensively, you know, I feel like the, you know, establishing a little bit more grit uh, for the defense because they've been challenged with several of the guys uh, that played significant roles last year uh, not being available because of, uh, of, of some type of surgery or injury that's keeping them on the sidelines. So I think uh, it starts with the team, everybody coming together. That what you talked about in the first question, just an, an appreciation uh, and a love for, for, for our opportunity. Uh, then uh, just procedurally, offensively, and then defensively, they've had to dig down and, and, uh, and, and some young guys have had to grow up uh, really, really fast uh, because of the, of the practice situation with guys being down. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Tony, it's Mike in Richmond. I'm curious, how does the um, the vision of what you want your offense to look like. How did that match last season, and how much closer are you to that vision at this point in spring? Yeah, so so last season, uh, obviously, there's a lot of reflection in all areas of the program, uh, and offensively, you know, I think it was it was such a drastic change, and 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 not just you know from the the philosophy and the terminology, but just from a cultural standpoint, from a program standpoint, which you know, offensive football is all about chemistry, cohesion, timing, right? And it takes, it, I mean, it takes time for those things to come to come together not to say that you don't have to have it on defense because you certainly do but you know offensive football is all 11 on the same page uh, every single play um, and so I think where we are now is you're just seeing that the guys are a lot more comfortable and they're not thinking about you know just the the, the basic things like how do I line up you know what's my stance you know what's my split uh, now they're able to get into a situation where that's that's part of their DNA they can start to scan the defense to see you know how the play needs to be executed as opposed to you know what we're doing so so I think last year was more just figuring out what we're doing now you're starting to see growth from the standpoint of of why we're doing what we're doing and then if you understand why you know what you're doing then you figure out the how and the how is what uh, allows you to be successful at a high level because you're now playing the game within the game uh, so to speak how about the process you know some coaches they come in and they've got assistants that they've been working with for five or six years you and Des had a very similar vision for what you want the offense to be but obviously you have different ways of accomplishing that what was the process like of building the offensive staff and, and getting everybody 
uh, kind of on the same page there. Right. I think I think first and foremost, when you're when you're building a staff, for me in particular, and, and kind of the, the people that I leaned on to give me guidance, you start with the people first. Make sure you get the get the right people uh, in the right seats on the bus, and then from there you can you can start to build uh, the the skill sets and the and the competency that you need. Uh, in terms of me and Des, uh, I knew when when I transitioned uh, to this position that you know play calling was something that I would have to give up, and, and understanding too that I'm an offensive of guy, uh, I, I know the challenges uh, at times of, of, of working for an offensive head coach, right? And so I wanted to be in a situation where I gave Des the freedom uh, to be able to, to call it free uh, on game day. So I had to relinquish uh, just uh, all of the uh, authority over to him. Now I have a lot of input, uh, but I don't try to uh, overstep my bounds. And in year one, man, I was focusing on, on the transition with all of the other uh, aspects of being a head coach. And so uh, uh, what we did, we talked about, say, philosophically, this is what we want to do we want to be a wide zone team right but we want to complement it with the inside zone you know we want to be able to be multiple so that we can can take advantage of the personnel that we have uh, to be able to give us advantages versus defense as opposed to you know I was very fortunate to be a part of a system where you know you you had horses like you had more horses than the other team so you could kind of line up and just do what it is that you wanted to do whereas right now you know we're working to be there and that's the vision once we get there then we'll be able to to line up and say hey you know come stop us uh, and we'll give it to you any way that you want but we're building that, and, and 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 so in order to get there, you know, we got to put the guys in a position to be successful based off of where they are uh, from a development standpoint and skill step standpoint. So, you know, the vision, you know, started with we both were like minded, and we spent a lot of time just talking ball uh, prior to uh, us working together uh, through our relationship, and both of us being running back coaches, and you know, both of us being a part of different. Uh, 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 programming in the off season to help prepare uh, us for the next step in our career. So it kind of came together over time, uh, but I also wanted to be intentional, you know, not to to mingle too much because uh, the, you, when you're when you're installing, especially from the beginning, you want to have a consistent voice uh, with those guys, you know, especially when you're when you're working with your quarterbacks. And last one on this topic, but yeah. obviously it comes down to winning and losing at That's the right. end. But right. in terms of getting fan support, building excitement, um, fans look at you as an offensive guy. They're going to judge you harder yeah. on how the offense performs. Um, how do you kind of handle that or approach that? You know, uh, uh, it's kind of like that old Nissan uh, com uh, commercial says, build it, they will come. Right, so we got to we got to produce. You know, I, I get that we we, we got to produce, but but also too in year one we had to lay a foundation, and and I think now what you're seeing is you're seeing you know kind of the fruits of laying the foundation because in year two the guys are a lot more comfortable you know in the system, which I believe is going to give them a better chance to uh, to be successful. So I know they're going to judge me as an offensive guy, uh, but I'm focusing on on building the program you know first, uh, and then once I lay the foundation the right way, get the all the pieces and, uh, moving and, and coordinated going in the right direction, I believe the success will come and you know hopefully then you know people will be able to see uh, what we're trying to establish here you know as a program and uh, I'm at I'm, I anticipate you know offensively uh, the guys are going to be in a, in a different position this year uh, than they were last year just because naturally they've had you know more time uh, they not they now have 15 practices they're going to have 25 practices before we play our first game they got a spring game on a uh, on Saturday so I think you're going to see more consistency uh, guys are a little bit more confident which is going to be allow them to make plays because that's really what it is I mean uh, I know I get a lot of credit, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, it's the guys being confident in what they're doing, knowing what they're doing, and going out and executing at a high level. So, you know, my hope is that uh, as we, you know, get into the season this year, you know, people will see uh, the progress that we made, uh, uh, and it'll encourage them to, to come out and support. And then the last thing I would say is, you know, the guys need the support regardless, you know, uh, and they want to they want to play in front of a, in front of a packed stadium. And these guys are working extremely hard, and and, and I think the results uh, last year, nobody wanted those results. Nobody was intending to have those results. It kind of, uh, it's what, but it was where we were, right? So we got to own those results. And I think these guys have really taken heart to owning those results. Uh, and they're excited to, to be able to show you the progress that they've made uh, once we get to, uh, once we get to the season. Uh, and we still got a lot of work to do, uh, but I think you'll see, you'll see progress, which will indicate that, hey, we're going in the right direction. And then, and then in fairness to, to these young men too, I'm going to be judged based off of, you know, the back end of my play calling career, right? Which, you know, that, but it took many years prior of laying a foundation to establish, to be, to get to that point, to be able to have that success. And I think that's, you know, indicative of any uh, buddy that's having success consistently at a high level, you got to take the time to, to lay the foundation uh, to be able to, to get there. Good point. Thanks, Tony. Tony, this is David Teal mm -hmm. in, in Richmond as yep. well. 
what will Saturday look like from a format standpoint? Yep. Oh, so we're trying to we're, we're playing a game. So we're going to have the blue team and the white team, and uh, we're going to have live uh, special teams. Uh, obviously, there won't be any fakes or anything like that. We'll keep it uh, because some some guys may be playing slightly out of position. But we're going to split the team as even as possible. Uh, it's going to start with a coin toss, and and we're going to go play ball. So the first half you'll it'll look just like a football game. Uh, second half, uh, you know, later in the game we may go with the running clock just because of of the depth that we have. Uh, but it's going to look uh, as close to a to a game that we can simulate. Because for us, you know, at the college level we don't get any preseason games so we don't get a chance to play anybody outside of ourselves so so and then you know we only have three live scrimmages uh, in the spring so this is a great opportunity for us to to kind of put the guys in as close to a game environment as we possibly can so we get a sneak peek of how they're going to respond uh, before we get into uh, to fall camp because when we get into fall camp I mean it's practice against each other we scrimmage our, ourselves but the next time we really tee it up is going to be in Nashville uh, in front of in front of a big crowd so it's going to be as close to a, a game environment as we possibly can structure you want to drop the uh, knowledge? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, this is a big thing in-house, and, and we announced uh, the head coaches. And uh, this is also an opportunity to help the coaches develop, which was done for me when I was uh, when, I, when I was assistant to get me to start thinking about things, you know, outside of my, my, my typical daily routine. So the white team, uh, his head coach is going to be Coach Sintum. So he's, uh, he's the head coach for the white team. And, you know, he's got to manage his timeouts. He's going to have to handle two-minute situations. He's going to have to make some fourth down calls. Uh, so I'm excited to see him uh, and his team. And then he'll be going against Coach Downing. He'll be the head coach for the, uh, for the blue team. Uh, you will see what's maybe different from a game, though we may have some guys that may have to cross over. So we may have some guys from the blue team that will have to put on a white penny and play for the white team just because of, of some of the, uh, the depth challenges that we have right now. Tony, you, you mentioned not being able to play other people yep. but before teeing it up in, in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Every couple of years among your colleagues, an idea percolate, percolates about perhaps making spring games an opportunity to be, you know, to bring another school on, on campus or for you to travel somewhere else. Is that something that you would find appealing? I definitely would. You know, I would be I would be in favor of it. Or if you take one of your uh, one of your scrimmages during the uh, fall camp period to be able to uh, to go against somebody else, uh, just gives you just gives you more opportunity to. Uh to just gauge where you're at, because uh, obviously, uh, and then it changes up the the, the, the monotony of, of constantly going against your, your own teammates. Because at the same time, you want them to compete, but you gotta you know, gotta take care of your of, uh, of your guys on your squad. But I would definitely be in favor. Uh, now, obviously, wouldn't want to you know take it to the extreme, but if there's an opportunity for us to to play somebody else, whether it's the spring game or whether it's one of the scrimmages that we get during the um, during the preseason, I know some other sports have opportunities to be able to scrimmage some folks outside themselves uh, in the preseason. I'd be in favor of that. Would, would, do you think it would be more appealing to, to fans? I think it would. I, I think I think it definitely would. Uh, an opportunity for for you to not only you know get to see uh, your team, but you get to see you know an opposing team as well, and you get a good good evaluation of, of where your team is you know coming out of the spring. Tony, I had a couple questions about Jay Wolf. Okay. First of all, is he going to play in the spring game? <laughs> no, he's not going to play in the spring game. Uh, so, so I know that they're, that they're scheduled to play at six o'clock uh, on Saturday night. Um, and again, his his priority right now is is baseball. I mean, the young man's you know uh, doing a really good job, touching ninety seven. I think he touched ninety seven the other day and uh, has a chance to really contribute. We thought we thought he was going to pitch on a, on Tuesday, uh, so we held him we held him from practice. But that game got out of hand, so he didn't get to pitch. But um, he he may be out for a little while. Just to, I mean, around the game, just depending upon the report time that baseball has. Typically, it's about three three and a half hours before the game, so that's right around the time uh, that we kick it off. Um, but no, he won't. He won't play. He won't play in the game. He's all baseball. And then I know there's some weather opportunities or, or issues that may uh, create an opportunity for a doubleheader on Saturday, possibly. So he'll be all baseball. How has Jay looked in the limited reps that he has gotten in spring practice? And is he at any sort of disadvantage in his quest to win the starting quarterback job because he's limited this spring? Man, he made some throws a day. You know, he had a seam ball. Uh, man, when his back foot hit, the ball was released. He anticipated it. Uh, got it in the scene right before the safety got there. So with his throws, so typically uh, a day that he does practice with us, he'll get 40 throws. So we manage those 40 throws, and he's really, really taking advantage of those and look good throwing the football, considering that he's also working on his baseball throwing motion.
which, which has probably been the most impressive thing uh, to me. And then when he's not uh, throwing, he's taking mental reps. And so uh, just standing back there. So sometimes he'll stand next to me behind the offense when he's not in just so he can see everything from the quarterback perspective. And just to see the, the growth uh, in the conversation that we're able to have uh, about what's going on offensively uh, tells me that he's taking advantage of it. And in terms of the last part of that question, a disadvantage, you know, that was a concern that he had. And I told him, I said, look, this competition is going to go all the way into fall camp, you know, and so so this is not going to be held against you. Um, we're going to make the most of the opportunity and then we're going to get into fall camp and, and really get dialed in and compete uh, before we make any decisions on, on where we're going at quarterback. Thank you. Yep. Cody, with obviously with Jay doing baseball, it's an opportunity for other guys in that quarterback room, like Anthony Colandrea, uh, early enrollee. Have you been surprised at how quickly he's been able to kind of get used to this speed in practice? Uh, I know Coach Lamb said that he has a lot of moxie and he's been pretty impressed early on. Yep, so I apologize for some of the noise in the background. The, the team, see, the teams are already talking a little bit of trash. They were separate. Now they're now they're getting after each other a little bit. So I apologize, but uh, you know that's that's a big reason why we why we went on Calandria because when you just watch him play, you can tell he's got an it factor, and that's one of the things that's hardest to evaluate with a quarterback. But you could see it, and then where he played is high school football. You're talking about St. Petersburg, man. Those guys and the team that he played for and the competition that he was going against. I mean, those guys, the speed of the game down there is pretty fast as well. So. And and he's a, I mean, he's a football junkie. I and mean, that's what that's what he loves to do. He's the kind of guy that is always going to be around the building. By the time by the time we get upstairs, take a shower, he'll probably already have practice watched all of his reps. Like he's that kind of guy. So uh, it was just a matter. I think the biggest thing for him was the initial transition to college. I think the school stuff, that aspect was probably a little bit more uh, than he anticipated. The football piece, I man, he was just waiting for an opportunity to get on the grass. And every single day, uh, you see that he's just becoming more and more confident, and he's got. I mean, he's got a little moxie to him, a uh, little different. And, and Tony's got a moxie too, just as just as Jay does. But what you see is he probably uh, Ant's probably got a little bit more personality, you know, in his moxie than the uh, than the other guys. A little bit more swagger, as he would say, that Florida swag. <laughs> um, you were talking about some depth issues that you were going to have yep. guys crossing over. This is also an opportunity for young guys to kind of have more reps. Yes, uh, it's an opportunity for like Jaden Gibson. That's right. So it's a, it's a it's an opportunity for well they are going to get reps because when we split the team evenly, especially in the spring, uh, we still got about 20 guys that are on the roster that are going to show up in uh, in the summer. So when you when you talk about splitting the team and you take out the injury, the long term injury guys, uh, regardless of whether they're going uh, back and forth, everybody's going to get some reps uh, because at most positions we're about one or two deep, and then anywhere where we're where we're, we're two on one side, one on the other side, one of those guys is going to cross over. So it's a great opportunity. For for all these guys uh, to get grabs, reps, but I'm excited about uh, Jaden Gibson. You know, he was a guy first day out. Man, he probably dropped more passes in that first day of practice than he did in his whole high school career practice, high school practice included, just because uh, it was a transition. But you watch him now, you see by the end of spring practice, he, uh, you know, he's a guy that's catching your attention because he's starting to, you know, bring things to the game, you know, that you didn't see the first day because he was just trying to figure it out because he's a lot more comfortable. So, you know, a lot of guys, I'm excited to see TJ, uh, Terrell Jones, uh, get an opportunity. Man, Diata's had a great spring, so I'm excited about the reps that he's going to uh, have an opportunity to get. Uh, there's a ton of guys. Uh, all those running backs are going to get, you know, a ton of uh, a ton of reps in the game. So uh, it's a great opportunity for us to, to kind of see these guys in a game situation and strain them a little bit, too, because we got some we got some warm weather coming in, right? They're going to have to take a little more reps than they might take in a typical practice. So it's going to be fun to see how these guys strain. So so you get to learn a lot about your football team uh, when you uh, when you have a spring game and you try to structure it like an actual game. Um, my last question, you know, last year, I think you only had eight healthy O-linemen yeah. last spring game. How nice has it been to have a little bit more bodies in there? And what have you seen from that group in you, the last few practices? You, you could complete a practice. You know, you could complete a practice and you don't have to. And so I, before the spring, I script out, the, you know, all 14 practices and you're able to kind of almost stay on your script. Whereas last year, it's like, well, we can't do that. We can't do that. We can't do that. So you're changing the whole the whole format. So it's been awesome uh, to have to have the depth. And then and it also helps the quarterbacks. It helps the running backs uh, because, again, when, when you have consistency in, in the guys that you have practicing, you're able to to develop that cohesion. So it's been uh, it's been completely different uh, and really really good to to see uh, to be able to just go out and compete and having two two full teams you know ready to go uh, every single practice. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Tony, as you wind down spring, uh, are there one or two spots where you're, or, or maybe more, where you're pretty committed to going to need another body from the portal yeah. uh, going into 
the offseason. Yep, so still still want to want to get back to, to our numbers on the offensive line. Uh, so we're still looking for another offensive lineman in the portal. Um, you know, knock on wood, uh, uh, hopefully going back to the first question with uh, everybody having fun and, and guys enjoying it, that I don't have anybody uh, that comes in and tells me that they want to go into the portal. You know, I don't anticipate that, but uh, it is it is a part of college football now. Uh, corner is another position, you know, where we got to get back up to, uh, up to the number. Um, and then everything else after that will just be kind of a reaction to, to any kind of changes that we that we don't foresee right now uh, on the roster. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting because uh, this is kind of the first time we're going through this this spring window, right? In terms of, of guys being able to go in, uh, and then also you kind of trying to complete your roster uh, before you go into summer. Thank you. Cool. We've got time for about two or three more minutes. Tony, Tony you, is that Tony, uh, you, Tony? You had mentioned before spring started that maybe in in hindsight last season you should have assessed more and pushed less with with your team have you indeed done that this spring and what in your mind have been the results of that yeah i think i think what you what you see is is now the foundation on both sides of the ball is 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 more in place so we can push a little bit harder Right, so we can we can we can push the guys to to take the next step. Uh, so that's been the biggest difference here. And, and when I look back, um, there was a ton of excitement coming in the door. I think everybody was eager, but just you know, foundationally, it was it was we were on different you know wavelengths. And so now what you're seeing is just the foundations of the program. Uh, the things that we're talking about core value wise, the guys are, are buying into that. It's becoming part of their DNA. Uh, the core offense, the core defense, you know, the guys have, have a really, really good understanding and that allows us to push. So we're in a completely different place. Uh, but I also have to make sure that, that every day um, I recap and I, I evaluate to make sure that I am assessing so that when we push, you know, we're pushing at the right pace, you know, with the right with the right amount of pressure uh, on these guys. And, and I know that may sound, you know, it's it's but pushing you because when we mean push, we gotta. I mean, the natural tendency is for us to do what is for us to just kind of a hey, relax, be complacent, say I'm good. Uh, well, that's human nature. Uh, but what we're trying to do is accomplish something special. So, man, we gotta push ourselves uh, every single day to to be committed to a standard. So when I say push, that's that you know that's what I mean. Uh, but I think now everybody understands what that standard is, and they're starting to to realize you know the importance of not just having that standard on the football field, but having that standard in the classroom, having that standard in the community, having that standard in every aspect of your life. Knowing that you're not going to be perfect, you can't achieve perfection. But man, every day you wake up, you have a decision and an opportunity to go to strive for perfection. Uh, Along the lines, where, where have you seen that group grow? You talk about the numbers, but, but how do you think that group has improved? And I guess how has Coach Heff's influence maybe meshed with what you and Des want to do offensively? You know, I'll start with the second part of that question and work back to the to the first part. I think the meshing is is you got uh, two guys that got NFL background. Right, so the, the the just the natural ability to communicate on specific things that they want to get get accomplished, and you know, Des philosophically is a wide zone guy, and uh, that was something that 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 I realized over my career that you got to have a little bit more of of that. Uh, style of run uh, in your uh, in your system to set up other things, and so uh, he's able to to really really take what Des wants to do with that concept and go articulate it in a way uh, to the offensive line that they can that they can get it because he's been in a wide zone system. You know he's been uh, at the NFL level, so the details that you need to be able to execute at a high level, uh, there's just a natural uh, cohesion because of the experiences that those guys uh, share. Now back to the guys up front, what you're seeing is you're seeing just they're a lot more confident in terms of, of just the overall cadence. You know, that's something that's been, uh, you think it's something simple, but you know, when you change a cadence, you know, some guys play in a system where they're all the cadence is, is set up. It never changes, right? And then you come in and now you want to have a, a variation where you go on too. Then you want to have, you know, inflections in your voice, which, are, which you know, give you an advantage from a snap count. So what you're seeing is the guys are a lot more comfortable with that. So we're not having those issues, which now allows us to be able to really focus on the fine details of the actual execution of the play once the ball is snapped. Um, and then you're seeing guys that are, that are being able to, to be cross-trained, uh, that can play multiple positions, which is key uh, from, from a depth standpoint, because you want to be able to have, uh, you know, four tackles. 
uh, that can play. Uh, but then you got to have a couple centers. You got to have multiple guards. You're going to have to have an emergency guard that can go out and play tackle. Uh, so once you're able to just get down kind of the, uh, the 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 core of what you're doing, then you're able to really you know evolve your system because you can cross train guys and then figure out where to get the guys in position to give you the best opportunity to have the best five on the field. Hey Jackie, why don't you give us the last question there? Yeah, just to follow you up on Mike's earlier question about the transfer portal. I think it was early signing day. You said you wanted 15 scholarship O-linemen. Yep. And you're, is that sort of the number that you're trying to reach? Yeah, so the number, the number ideally would be 15 scholarship offensive linemen. And so you get 85 scholarships, and so you break down your roster. And, and so each position has a number. Uh, and there's going to be years where you may be over. Um, but if you're over at one position, you have to be under at another position. And so we were, you know, we were trending high, you know, on the offensive line, uh, just because we had to go to work immediately to build it up. And then we had some transition. And so then we, you know, we got down uh, a couple of numbers. And so, you know, we're looking to get that number back to where it, uh, where it need to be. And then we were counting on possibly, you know, one of the two uh, veteran guys to come back that decided to transition, you know, into, uh, into the workforce. And so you're constantly trying to manage that number, but the typical number is 15. Uh, on the offensive line um, and but if I'm going to go over I probably would go over on the offensive line uh, just because of the importance of, uh, of that position.